Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist welcoming you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to their own store name. You know us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. And that sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Each one scientifically compounded to do a job for you. Take Rexall's famous mouthwash, MI-31, as an example. MI-31 is a special antiseptic formula that kills contacted germs almost instantly when used full strength, yet will not harm delicate membranes of the mouth and throat. It's quality like that we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> Mr. Scott of Rexall has asked Phil to call the band together so that he might address them on a matter of importance. It must be very important, for Mr. Scott has been talking to the boys for over two hours. And as we look in, he is just finishing his speech. And in conclusion, gentlemen, I'd like to say that any resemblance between you and musicians is not only accidental, but downright malicious. <laughs> <laughs> now then, are there any questions? Yeah, who are you? <laughs> I'm Mr. Scott. I represent the 10,000 independent Rexall dealers who pay for this program, and I'm here to see that you do your best for Rexall. Now, any other questions? What's a Rexall? <laughs> <laughs> they must be pulling my leg. They can't be that stupid. <laughs> they can't, too. Fellas, I'll explain what Rexall is. It's one of the world's foremost dispensers of pharmaceuticals. <laughs> Furthermore, it's that's one... Enough, that, that's enough, Harris. <laughs> Their little minds are loused up enough without your Rexall. <laughs> I'll explain. <clears throat> a number of years ago, a group of druggists formed a company. They needed a title to identify themselves. And after many months... They came up with a grand old name. You know what they called it? They called it Mary! Mary! Mary is a grand old name! They didn't call it Mary! Harris, please, you talk to them. My ulcer is starting to nudge me. <laughs> or, or, or better yet, Mrs. Harris, you talk to them. Please, Mr. Scott, you're asking me to lose my self-respect. They won't listen to anybody. If they won't listen to anybody, how does Mr. Harris keep them in line? Well, there's one way. He gets behind a curtain and says, Now hear this. Now hear this. This is Petrillo speaking. <laughs> that work? Well, that depends. If their union dues is paid, they ignore that, too. <laughs> Harris, as the leader of this band, it's up to you to see that they play properly, even if you have to teach them to read music. Them guys know how to read music. And I'll show you. Artie, read what's on your music stand. Abby rents two dollars per day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the music. What does it say on the music? Shermer's book one for beginners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Isn't there anyone in this orchestra who knows what he's doing? Yes, there is. There is one man. 
My concert master, Mr. Remley. <laughs> Remley? Why, that no talent slob. What wait a minute, on? wait a minute. <laughs> now, just a minute, Mr. Scott. Don't knock Frankie. He's a pretty smart kid. He knows music. Oh, we'll soon find out. Remley, read that music you have in front of you. Say please. <laughs> All right, please read the music. What music? The sheet of paper you have in front of you. The one with the black dots. That's music? <laughs> I thought I was seeing spots in front of my eyes. <laughs> I've been having my glasses changed every week. Frankie, listen, now, will you cut out the clowning? Now, stop kidding. Mm -hmm. Now, read your guitar part just the way I wrote it for you. <laughs> Very well, maestro. It says, when you hear noises coming from the other instruments, you'll know the number has started. <laughs> Don't do nothing until the trombone player hits you in the back of the head. <laughs> At which point, you count two, strum once, and put your guitar down before you get in trouble. <laughs> Harry? Is that the way you write the music for them? Yeah, I do all my own arranging. <laughs> of course, it's a little tough with the violin section. They can't read English, and I gotta draw pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no wonder these musicians don't know anything. They've got a leader who knows even less. If you learn to read music and play yourself, maybe... Now, wait a minute. The... Just a minute, sir. I'm not only a fine instrumentalist, but I read music fluently. You do, eh? Let's see you read this. Very well. It's in the key of D-flat, which has five flats, is in the Alla Brave tempo with a fermata on the end chord, finishing with a big piatti. I'll be darned, he did it. I did? Oh, hey, Alice, look at me. I can read music. Frankie, did you hear that? I read the music. I read the music. Exhibitionist. <laughs> What are you trying to do? Show the rest of us up? I'm not trying to show nobody up. I'm just gentlemen, trying to Gentlemen, prove gentlemen, gentlemen, please, please. I'm tired of all this bickering, and I want it to stop right now. Oh, please, Mr. Scott, control yourself. And nobody asked you to butt in. Oh, oh, you. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mrs. Harris. I didn't mean to shout at you. Well, what's wrong, Mr. Scott? You've been irritable all morning. Yeah, what's up, Scotty? I hate to see you this way. Your usual miserable self. <laughs> I apologize, Mrs. Harris. I'm all upset. It's a personal problem at home. Your wife can't stand you, huh? Frank. <laughs> How can you say a thing like that about such a fine person as Mr. Scott? If he's having any trouble at home, it's because he can't stand his wife. She's probably a nag who spends all his money, runs around with other... Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. I'm not having trouble with my wife. It's somebody else. Your girlfriend, huh? <laughs> oh, no, no, we got along splendid. <laughs> I'm having trouble with my daughter, Marjorie. What's wrong? Well, as you know, she's only 17, and she's fallen in love with a man of 40. There's 23 years difference in their ages, and she wants to marry him. Oh, well, what's so terrible about that? When I married Phil, there was 23 years difference in our ages. The what? Yeah, I happen to like older women. <laughs> well, I, I don't mind the difference in their ages so much. It's just that this fellow is a fortune hunter and he's after Marjorie's money. She's got money, huh? <laughs> I think I can help you, Mr. Scott. When this greedy fortune hunter comes around tomorrow night, tell him that Marjorie is already married. But she isn't married. We're eloping in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't object to your daughter marrying me, would you? No. No, I wouldn't object. I'd just rather see her dead, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Who cares what you think? Have Marjorie meet me at her bank and we'll leave from there. <laughs> and... You can send what we can't carry, so we'll oh, have Oh, shut up! <laughs> I'm sorry I mentioned the whole thing. Goodbye. Wow. What's he sore about? 
I had a solution to his problem, but he wouldn't give me a chance to tell him what I was. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you doing, Artie? We're warming up for Alice's song. All right, Alice, start singing. Sing what? What are you playing? What do you care? This bitch with anything. <laughs> Put another nickel in, in the Nickelodeon. All I want is having you and music, music, music. I'd do anything for you, anything you'd want me to. All I want is kissing you and music, music, music. Closer, my dear, come closer. The nicest part of any melody is when you're dancing close to me. So put another nickel in, in the Nickelodeon. All I want is loving you and music, music, music. Put another nickel in and watch your favorite music begin. And music, music, music I'd do anything for you Anything you'd want me to All I want is kissing you And music, 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 music. Closer, my dear, but closer The nicest part of any melody Is when you're dancing close to me So put another nickel in In the Nickelodeon all I want is loving you and music, 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 music. You know, Alice, I've been thinking about Mr. Scott's problem. You know, it's pretty serious, and I think we ought to help him. I know one thing. I wouldn't want my daughter married to a fortune hunter. Now you know how my father felt about you. <laughs> oh, honey, when I married you, I didn't know you had money. <laughs> By the time I found out, it was too late to back out, and I have suffered through it. <laughs> Say, Phil, I have an idea. All we have to do is make Marjorie forget this older man she's going with. I know that, but how? Well... Let's find a young, handsome, clean-cut, typical American boy that she can fall in love with. Yeah, but after she falls in love with me, then what happens? <laughs> I wasn't talking about you. But, honey, will you listen to me? I'm the only one to make Margie forget this guy. If you remember, when I met her last year, she practically swooned over me. She had a terrific crush on me. That's right. The poor, weak-minded child did. <laughs> well, let's get over to the house and you can talk to her. Hey, Curly, what makes you think you'll be able to get Margie to forget this other guy? Are you kidding? What, are you kidding? <laughs> what? Not kidding. I'm not kidding. Not nah, kidding. I'll make her forget him like that. Before I married Alice, she was going with Tyrone Power. Alice, tell him, how long did it take me to make you forget Tyrone? Ten years. <laughs> Ten, I've only known you eight years. You still have two years to go, dear. <laughs> and so, Mr. Scott, that's... Well, that's what we're doing over here. We want to help you. In short... As long as you're not capable of handling your family affairs yourself, we'll do it for you. That's very nice of you, Rimley. I appreciate your efforts in my behalf, and I'll thank you to keep your big fat nose out of my door. <laughs> Mr. Scott, uh, look, don't you want our help? Curly, don't ask him. Look, Scotty, we're gonna help you. I don't want your help. You're gonna get it whether you want it or not. Now get lost. We got work to do. Please, Frankie. Mr. Scott, very often children resent interference from their parents, and we thought, well, 
perhaps, you know, we might make Marjorie understand. That's right. Now, just let me talk to her for five minutes. That's all. Five little minutes. Now, where is she? She's in the den. Do you think you can influence her? Scotty, five minutes with me and you won't be able to take her out of the house without a leash. (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me. Oh, filthy, here you go again making a female happy. (laughs) Happens to be my business. (laughs) Yes, sir, I hope seeing me again doesn't stagger the girl. Uh Uh-oh, there she is. Uh, Hiya, Margie. Hello, Curly. (laughs) Got her on the ropes already. (laughs) I see uh, you didn't forget me. How could I? I once had a terrific crush on you. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Wasn't I a silly little child? (laughs) Well, I I wouldn't say silly. Uh, Discriminating is a better word. But at any rate, it's all over now. Is it, my dear? (laughs) Oh, yes. This time I'm really in love. There's only one man for me, and that's Mr. (laughs) Crail. Crail? Is is his first name Clyde? How you like that? I always thought that was a name I made up. (laughs) (laughs) Say, Margie, but look, honey, after knowing me, how could you even look at anyone else? Because Mr. Crail is more romantic than you. Oh, pull yourself together, kid. This Crail is just a preliminary boy. With me, you is messing with a main event. You were quite a ladies' man in your day. (laughs) What do you mean, in my day? Well, Clyde is ever so much younger than you. He's only 40. (laughs) (laughs) Well, how old do you think I am? You must be at least 42. What do you mean? I'll settle for that. Why think about this older man when uh, uh, when I'm available? But you're not available. You're married to Mrs. Harris. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must finish writing this letter to Clyde. Goodbye. Clyde, Clyde. The impossible has happened. Harris has been rebuffed. Oh, could I be losing my charm? No. <laughs> Poor kid must have astigmatism or something. <laughs> Well, Phil, how did you do? Well, uh, well, practically had her in the boat, but she slipped the hook. <laughs> Losing your touch, huh, Curly? I guess you're not as seductive as you think you are. I am, too, and I'll prove it. It's just because I'm married. She's a nice kid, and she doesn't want to take me away from poor old Alice. <laughs> Look, I'll show you. Alice, all you got to do is to go in and tell Margie that you've given me up. I ain't I... gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, it's to help the girl and watch your grammar. <laughs> We're just pretending. If you tell her you're giving me up, she'll be amenable to my approach. She'll think that... Amenable! <laughs> Sounds crazy to me, but if you think it'll work, I'll try it. Good. Now, Remley, you go inside and keep Scotty busy so he doesn't bother us. And Alice, all you have to do is to tell Margie that you're giving me up, and she'll take the cue, and the rest is going to be a cinch. Now, go ahead. Wait a minute, honey. Look. Leave the door ajar. I want to hear Marjorie pant when you tell her the news. Okay, dear. Hello, Marjorie. Hello, Mrs. Harris. What are you doing here? Well, I... I have some news that I know will interest you, and I came to tell you. You see, I'm leaving Mr. Harris. A very wise move. (laughs) (laughs) How the kid's being subtle. Marjorie, you don't understand. I'm giving Mr. Harris up so you can have him. What would I want with him? (laughs) She doesn't want to appear anxious. (laughs) (laughs) Now, look, dear, you needn't pretend with me. I know you want him. 
But I don't want him. You can keep him. I don't want to keep him. I'm giving him to you. <laughs> I don't want him. I wish they wouldn't fight over me like that. <laughs> I'm not worth it. Marjorie, please take him. But I don't... Look, look. I'll make you a sporting proposition. You can have Mr. Harris and 13 points. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy him off on me. Why are you so anxious to get rid of him? I've outgrown him. That's why I'm giving him to you. I've outgrown him, too. Hear them dames talk, you'd think I was an old girdle. <laughs> Marjorie, why don't you take him? He's too old to make any trouble. He'll just lie around the house. No. He'll make a wonderful watchdog. He barks when strangers come in. I'm sorry, Mrs. Harris, but I already have a dog. Bet he ain't got a pedigree like mine. <laughs> well, Marjorie, if you're not interested, I guess I'll run along. Well, Phil, Marjorie won't even take you I know, I know, I know. I told you. Watch, dog. I told you this wouldn't work. What we need is a nice boy her own age to take her mind off this other fellow. Phil. Phil, I know just the boy. Who? Julius. Julius? <laughs> I'd rather see her go steady with Cecil the sea sick sea serpent. <laughs> now, Julius is a nice boy, and he's just about her age. But, Alice, don't, don't you... Don't argue. Go call him and tell him to come over here. Oh, all right. Curly, I don't get it. Why did you call Julius to come over? Well, it was my idea. I thought we could use Julius to lure her away from the other fellow. Fine bait would be kinder to throw her a hunk of doped horse meat. <laughs> He's such a contrary kid. How'd you get him to come over? I appealed to his romantic side. I told him I want him to make love to a beautiful girl. And I certainly wish he'd hurry and come on... Hey, relax, Bob. Errol LaBruzio is reporting for duty. Well, it's about time you got here. Do you know what you're supposed to do? Sure. You told me over the phone that you want me to take a pretty blonde away from a no-good fortune hunter. That's right. Now get started. Okay, step aside. Miss Faye, fly with me and I'll rescue you from the clutch of this money man group. <laughs> Alice ain't the girl. It's Mr. Scott's daughter. Oh, now you're after her money. It's not me. <laughs> There's another guy after her money and we want oh, you Curly, to... Oh, Curly, what's the use? Marjorie won't even look at him. He's such an obnoxious little brat. As himself, yes. <laughs> but I've got an idea. Now look, Julius, she likes my type. And I thought instead of being your usual repulsive character That you could act like me Oh, instead of being repulsive You want me to be nauseating <laughs> Never mind I do this myself But I'm a little old for Marjorie But she loves my personality She loves your personality? There's just one thing I want to know about this girl What? How'd she get hurt? <laughs> Why should I get involved with this Daffy Dane? Now, she's not Daffy She's Mr. Scott's daughter and she's a very nice girl Please, Julius, do it for me All right, Miss Fay, I'll do it for your sake I'll... Shh, Julius, quiet, here comes Marjorie Now remember, act just like me and you're a cinch Okay <clears throat> Oh, Margie, hi uh, I want you to meet a young friend of ours uh, Miss Scott, this is Julius Abruzio Julius. Oh, come with me to Alabama. Hey, come and meet my dear old pappy. He's always boiled and oh so happy. And that's what I like about that sound. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck was that? I think he's cute. Yeah. Ain't I? <laughs> Do you think I'm cute, Julius? You'll have to ask me later. I'm too busy thinking about how cute I am. <laughs> You're so fascinating. You're so right. <laughs> I'm the greatest boon to American womanhood since the Nylon Nighty. <laughs> Alice, Alice, please tell me I don't act like that. All right, I'll tell you you don't. But you do. 
Marjorie, prepare yourself for a thrill. I'm taking you out tonight. Gee, you're so masterful. You ain't just beating your gums, Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother and I have reached a firm decision about this Mr. Crail. Who? Mr. Crail, your fiancé. Oh, him. Daddy, I want to introduce you to a new boy I just met. This is Julius Abruzio. Julius? You mean you and Julius... You shut it, Dad! Dad! <laughs> <laughs> sure, now that I'm practically your son-in-law... You are not my son-in-law. It's question of time. <laughs> now, the first thing I'm going to do when I become vice president in charge of the Rexall radio program is to cut down on expenses. Now, just a minute, young man. Nobody asked you to change our radio program. I know a way we can break Mr. Harris's contract. I don't care what you know about... You do, my son? <laughs> Let's go into the library and talk this over. Hey, Mr. Scott, don't listen to him. Julius, what are you doing to me? Now, just what did you have in mind, my boy? Hey, Julius, now, Julius. as I see it, Pop, all we gotta do Julius. is prove that these two guys have no talent which shouldn't Julius. be hard. Julius. Keep talking, boy. I love Julius. your style. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. The other day I was telling a customer about one of Rexall's best-known products called Bismarex. Oh, you don't have to tell me about Bismarex. I already know for myself what swell relief it is for acid indigestion. Well, as a matter of fact, that's exactly what this customer said. But wouldn't you still like to know why that's true? Well... Yes, I guess I would. Well, the secret lies in the scientifically developed formula for Bismarex. You see, the active ingredients in Bismarex vary in the time it takes them to dissolve in the stomach. That way, the relief it gives is not only prompt, but continuous and prolonged. Excess acidity is often neutralized within one minute. Then, the other ingredients, dissolving more slowly, ease up those acid gastric pains, and finally... Bismarex leaves a soothing, protective covering on irritated stomach membranes. No wonder Bismarex is so popular. Well, ma'am, 10,000 family druggists don't wonder about it. You see, we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Julius, do you really like Marjorie? Yeah, she's wonderful. Now, wait a minute. Don't be too hasty, little pal. Margie's not for you. Just because she happens to have money, she... Mr. Not... Harris, do you think I'm the kind of a person who'd sell my soul for money? Well, no, do I... Do you think I'd bother my affections for mercenary gain? No, do I... Do you think I'm making love to this girl just so I can get my hands on her money? No. How do I have to phrase this to get him to say yes? <laughs> For quick relief from a winter cough, try pleasant-tasting Rexall Cherisote. Cherisote goes after coughs two ways, soothing irritated membranes of the throat and bronchial tubes and helping to loosen the cough. If your cough's really stubborn, better see your doctor. Ask for Cherisote wherever you see the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Next, it's Sam Spade. Then Gertrude Lawrence stars on Theater Guild on NBC.